Thank you for tuning in to this week's message. For more information about Connections Church, you can go to connectionschurch.church or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Well, what a blessing she is and all of our uh, students. And, and let's thank our student ministry for leading us in worship and Miss Ellie for that beautiful piece on the piano. And I know I'm aging myself, but I'm sitting here thinking, I remember when she couldn't even reach the keys of the uh, keyboard or piano, and, and wow, uh, time sure flies by, and we're sure proud of all of our, our students here who are changing the world for Jesus Christ, amen? And that's what life is all about, having him change our lives and in turn us being used by his glory to change the lives of others. So welcome to Connections on the last Sunday of what? 2019, and how many of you are going to be writing that on, that on your checks and other things for the next two months or so, right? Someone said that'll be the first and continual mistake that you make in the new year is writing down the wrong date. If you have your Bibles, break them out to Psalm 92, and please take your handouts out, and there's a great place to take some notes on one side, grab a pen or pencil, something to write with. You don't want to miss what God's doing. And, and uh, how many of you had a really good Christmas this week? And uh, very blessed in your life. How many of you by chance maybe didn't get exactly what you had hoped for, wished for, or wanted uh, on Christmas this year? Uh, for those of you raising your hands, you can send a strongly worded note to Pastor Scott uh, at 304 McCaddenville Road. And he's going to send a strongly worded email to Santa to let him know there was a mix-up and try to get that straightened out for you. So remember, that's Pastor Scott at 304. Okay. Uh, you got it, I think. So So just let him know. He'll take care of all that for you. Uh, being in ministry now for quite a few years, I have the benefit of history and hindsight. How many of you know those are two great things in a lot of ways? And I have that on a number of things uh, that have to do with Christ and Christianity. And one thing for sure that I've experienced in this area uh, is, is the arena of strength and stability in the growth process of people in the church, what we call discipleship. One of the things, and look at me, don't miss this, that, that Justin was, was going over with us just a, a few minutes ago and, and stressing to you the importance of connect groups, small group ministry, getting in groups with people and growing in Christ together. I can't even count the number of people who over the years have asked me to pray for them and shared the struggles that they're having and, and, and just going on and on and on down this laundry list of things that are not right in their lives. And inevitably, they get to this point where they make a statement along the lines of, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because I go to church, but I just don't understand why these things are happening or, or haven't happened that, that are on my list. I mean, I, I go to church. How many of you ever heard that before from people that are in your life? Maybe you've said that before. What I've come to discover over the years, and it didn't take, take long for this, is that so many people do indeed go to church. But unfortunately, never come to understand that we are supposed to be the church, not just go to church. And I'm going to tell you, there is a huge, huge difference. I believe that our passage out of Psalm 92 today is going to shed the light on what the difference in these two really is. But before we take a, a look at what being the church is all about, let me quickly encourage you to truly, number one in your outline, see God's glorious church for what it is. And what I want to state right off the bat is simply this. The church is not a building or a denomination. Amen? According to the Bible, the church is the body of Christ. The church is every person who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. When we do that as human beings, then we cross the line into being part of the family of God. Write that down. The family of God, the body of Christ. That's what the glorious church is. That's who we are. That's what we, we comprise and make up. All those who have placed their faith in Jesus for salvation, as John 3, 16 and 1 Corinthians 12, 13 explain to us. Local churches are gatherings of people who claim the name of Christ. The local church is where believers can fully apply the body principles of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, encouraging, teaching, and building one another up in our most holy faith and the knowledge and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We as the church are to continually becoming, be becoming more and more like Christ and continually giving Christ to those around us. Now, I know there's a little caution right here because some people like to say, well, the church has its flaws. You, you Christians, you aren't perfect by no means. And, and I would say to those people, you are exactly right. How many of you 
messed up this week who follow Christ? How many of you blew it royally this week who follow Jesus, who, who love Jesus passionately, and yet you sinned at some point in time this week? Your temper got the best of you. Your thought life kind of kind of got in a bad place. Something happened. You said the wrong thing. You did the wrong thing. It, it's exactly true that we have our flaws, that right now we aren't perfect. But guess what? We are in being God's people, God's, God's body, God's family. We are in the process of being perfected by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us and through us, right? That we are daily being conformed more and more into the image of Christ if we are living in full surrender. Not yet have we arrived at perfection, but we are on our way that one day we're going to shed these sinful bodies and all the struggles we have down here, and we're going to see him as he is, and we're going to be made like him completely at that moment. The Bible says we're going to be without spot or wrinkle. We're going to be the glorious bride of Christ, the, the perfect body of Christ at that moment. We're on our way to that. We haven't yet arrived. So I encourage you today, and that's what we're going to be talking about for the next few moments, to stop going to church. <laughs> You're like, man, that's not a thing a pastor really needs to say. But it is. Stop going to church because that in and of itself is just not enough. Instead, listen to verses 12 through 15 out of Psalm 92. And, and our production team is going to have it on the, on the screens if you don't have your Bible. So kind of follow along with us. I'm going to kind of break it down. Beginning with it says, the righteous will do what? Flourish. Don't, don't you love that word? Flourish like a palm tree. They're going to they're gonna grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Now let's talk about that for a moment. We're going to grow like a palm tree and, and like a cedar. They're going to flourish. And what does that word flourish mean? The word flourish isn't really a word that we use a lot in everyday language, is it? I mean, when, when you met and greeted each other this morning, either out in the uh, hallway or in here in the sanctuary or somewhere, when we said, hey, shake your neighbor's hand and all that kind of stuff, you didn't say when someone asked you, how are you doing today? You didn't say, man, I am great. I am just flourishing. Did anybody say that at all? Don't lie. You're in church. Don't lie when you're out of church. Just don't lie, period. We just don't use that language. We've heard it. We've read in stories about flourishing. We see it in the Bible. But what does that really mean? Because we just don't use that language quite often. And, and if you do, people kind of look at you kind of weird like, uh, I mean, try it when you go to work tomorrow. When you walk in and say, hey, good morning. How you doing today, angel? And you say, man, I am just fantastic. I'm just flourishing. And they're going to look at you like, what did they put in her eggnog over the holidays? I don't want that. But what that word simply means is, is this. It means to thrive. Don't you love that? It means to, to thrive, to be, to be overcoming, to be successful, to be blooming, to be blossoming. It's a, it's a powerful word that, that is just, just a beautiful word to, to describe prosperity and blessed and, and thriving and growing and, and all those kinds of things. It means this, church, that we're not just scraping by. How do you like that? We're not just barely making it from one day to the next. Oh, I just don't know how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to drag my bones up out of bed the next morning and make it through one more day. You ever heard somebody kind of talk like that? And, and, and honestly, when they start talking like you, you're like, I don't really know how you're going to do it either, pal. With that attitude, <laughs> you're, you're pretty much so done for unless something changes big time. But not, not flourishing. This means that we're, we're living in that abundance, that, that power, that, that, that true life, that Real life that God and, and only God can bring to us. It means having that spiritual growth that you're literally, when you're righteous, you're planted, you're thriving, you're prospering. And then the psalmist compares it to two trees, like the cedar and the palm tree. And, and the cedar trees, they, they're known for their durability. They were known for being pleasant to look at and also pleasant to smell. Any of you ever had a cedar chest or a cedar-lined closet? If you've got some money, because that stuff ain't cheap. But, man, everything just smells so good. That aroma that, that cedar puts off is just, just amazing. And, and, for example, when Solomon built a temple to God, he made the columns and the posts and the beams and the roof out of cedar because his building was designed to last for centuries. Cedar is durable. If you have a cedar chest, it's attractive and it smells good. We're, we're being compared to flourishing like a cedar, and that's, that's strong and lasting and like a palm. What was the palm branch of the palm tree? It was always a symbol of victory. 
Don't you love that? How many of you like to win? How many of you played some board games with your family while you had those wonderful gatherings over the last week or so? Anybody? Anybody play a little cutthroat Monopoly or? I mean, you know what I'm talking about because it starts off real friendly. Hey, guys, let's just get together and have a game night. And then it just goes all downhill from there. Because when you start losing, that competitive stuff starts showing itself to the point that you're like giving somebody an ugly look across the table like, I can't believe you just took Park Place from me. That was mine. I'm going down for that. We saw a monopoly for millennials in Walmart this week. All I can say is just go check it out. It's hilarious. I won't say any more because I'm getting some mean looks. Don't hurt my feelings. I need my... Okay, never mind. Sorry. Shouldn't have said that. We love victory. We love to win. And that's exactly what the palm represents. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey before he was to be crucified, it was known as a triumphal entry when he comes as a king. So they were wave what at him as he entered into the town? Palm branches. We call it Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter. The righteous will flourish. Look at me for just a moment, church. That's exactly what the psalmist tells us here. The righteous will flourish. So I want to ask you this question right now. On the last Sunday of 2019, how are you doing? Are you flourishing right now? You feel like, man, I'm just, ain't no devil going to stop me. Nothing going to get me down, man. I know with Christ I'm victorious in all things. I am the head and not the tail. I am the first. and Man, I am victorious with God. I will not be stopped. I am living that flourishing life. Also know that both these trees are evergreens. They flourish all the time, right? There's life. There's strength. There's victory. There's fruit. So how are we doing? Are we living that blessed life? Are we prospering? I'm not talking about just having our bank accounts full. I'm talking about having our lives full of Jesus Christ and the power of this Holy Spirit that can overcome anything. Are we flourishing and living that prosperity life in that way? That will grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Scripture says those that flourish will do so because they are planted. Where? Where? In the pool hall, in the club, in the bar, in their work, in their hobby. No, they are planted in where? The house of the Lord. Now that, that's, that's something powerful. They're going to flourish in the courts of our God. Now notice that scripture does not say that those who are going to church will flourish like that, right? No, there's a distinction here. It says those who are planted in the house of the Lord are going to flourish in the courts of God. I love that imagery. They, they still will still bear fruit in old age as it goes on. They will, they will stay fresh and green. That's encouraging to me as every year passes by. They're going to proclaim that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. Folks, that's going to be our message We're going to share that. We're going to spread that. We're going to preach that. We're going to proclaim that. The Lord is my rock. My God is my rock. The Lord is upright. He is the one that will bless you, that will sustain you, that will give you this kind of life. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they're flourishing, they're blessed, they're prospering, they're connected, they're emotionally engaged, they're making a difference, they're fulfilled. Are you planted or do you just go to church? Unfortunately, a lot of folks, if we're using that language, you wouldn't use the word flourishing. As we mentioned a few moments ago, instead of saying, I'm spiritually flourishing, you might say, well, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of spiritually dry right now. How many of you are feeling that? How many of you are walking through that barren desert place right now in, in your walk with Christ? You feel like, man, you're a million miles away. You just can't, can't sense or feel his, his presence right now. Maybe you'll say, I'm relationally bearing, barren. I, I'm just empty. I, I don't, can't seem to make those bonds, those friendships. Or maybe you're emotionally withering right now and, and everything's just chaos in your, in your heart, in your mind. Maybe you're hurting financially. Maybe your joy is, is not there. So many people say, I'm searching, I'm reaching, I'm longing, I'm hoping for that thing, that hit, that something, that buzz, that, that relationship job that whatever it is that I don't have that's going to fulfill what I'm missing on the inside 
Hear me today, church. Too many people make this proclamation, I go to church. I go to church, but I'm, I'm not flourishing. Isn't that, isn't that a crime? Isn't that just sad? When, when flourishing is, is more than possible, it's available, it's readily available, that, that when we plant ourselves in God, when we plant ourselves in the house of God, in the family of God, that, hey, hey the benefit is we're going to flourish. And you're probably going to hear that word a thousand times. I hope, you, I, th- I hope you hear it in your sleep tonight. I hope when you lay down that you just hear that word pounding from my old, old South Gastonia southern voice, flourishing, flourishing, flourishing. Over and over again, I just hope it, it pounds like a drumbeat in your spirit because that's exactly the life that God makes available to every one of us when we do more than just go to church, but we plant ourselves in God's house. Secondly, on your outlines, I want you to really see the seed that is your life. We need to recognize that our lives are a seed. So what, what does that mean exactly? That means that, that a seed has tremendous potential. A seed has the potential to grow and thrive and multiply and produce all kinds of fruit to be a blessing to not only themselves but to so many other people. But a seed that's not planted has the potential to lie dormant, unproductive, unfruitful, and dissatisfied. Your life and my life is a seed. I'm going to give a couple quick principles about planting and the seed. Number one there on your outline, the first one is this. What do we know about a seed? Well, first of all, a seed can only grow if it's what? If it's planted. Who flourishes? Those who are planted in the house of God. In fact, Jesus told a real powerful story known as a parable in Matthew's gospel. Out of Matthew chapter 13, he was talking about a farmer who used the word sower uh, here in this, this account, a word that his contemporaries would have understood. And he said, a sower went out to sow or to plant some seed. And the sower threw out some seed, and some of the seed fell on a path, a hard, hard ground area. And since the seed could never take root, birds came along and did what? Ate the seed or stole the seed. That seed never reached its potential. Some seed fell on shallow soil, and so it spurted up quickly. But because the roots never grew where? Deep. Whenever the sun shined down and the heat rose, it withered up and died immediately. Now, some started to grow, but then some other plants with thorns and and thistle all choked out the life of that plant that was emerging. And Jesus said, those things were the worries and the concerns and the cares of this life. So there's three different types of seed that were thrown out, or excuse me, one type of seed that was thrown out on three different types of soil, and each one of them had their challenges, and never grew to flourish. But then he said there's a a fourth soil that is called, write this down somewhere, good soil. Soil that's receptive, that the seed is planted into. And what happens in that good soil is that the seed is able to take deep roots, to grow down strong and healthy, and powerfully. And when that happens, then all of a sudden there's a production of fruit that takes place. And as he described in his parable, some 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some 100 fold, that one seed becomes a massive blessing because it was planted in good soil. Who is it that flourishes? Who remembers that? Those who are planted where? Would you share that with your neighbor one more time? In the house of God. A seed can only grow if it's planted. Second thing I hope we understand is this that going to church isn't the same as being planted. That can be a real eye opener for a lot of folks, but that's truth, and that's what we're here. To, to, to walk through and to, to plan in our lives. There's a real difference. You can hear it even in the language. For, for example, some of you, if you go to church, and, and, and here's probably what you may have said even just this week amongst your, your family, your friends, or whomever. That might, might, have, might have been raised this question in your household. Hey, are we going to church Sunday? <laughs> you ever said that or heard that? Hey, are, are, we, are we going Sunday? And some of you are like, well, you know, there's, there's a big ball game coming on Sunday, man. I'd like to get my, my barbecue going early and, and get the food cranking and, and, and be settled in and ready. So we'll just miss this week. Or, you know what, man, we, 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 the great day, the weather's going to be, be awesome, man. We can just take a, a day trip up. Now, funny you didn't take that day trip on Saturday. No, instead you choose to take that day trip on Sunday when we're supposed to be planted where? 
in the house of the Lord yet. Yeah, it's just, we, 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 we'll, we'll go to the next week or maybe maybe two or three weeks down the road. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a trip I need to take the next week too. And then you got ball games uh, the week after that. So maybe in five weeks we'll, we'll go to church. Now, those of you that know me, you know full well how I am. And those of you that don't know me, I'm just going to explain for a moment. I'm not saying you have to be here every second, that you never take a vacation, you never miss a Sunday. That's not what I am saying. What I am saying is if we don't prioritize the house of God, then before you know it, man, we are drifted so far away from what God is to us and, and who he's supposed to be that we are, we're lost. And it's not a passion anymore. And, and the more we stay out, the easier it becomes to stay out. Why? Because we aren't planted in the house of God. I'm just going to tell you, that's never a question in my house from week to week. Or are we going to church? Say, well, it couldn't be because you're the pastor. you got to show up. Even when I wasn't the pastor, I showed up. Why? Because I believe in the church. It has its bumps like we talked about earlier. It has its imperfections, but bless God, we are on our way to being perfected. And this is what God has called us to do. Not just go to church, but be the church of Jesus Christ. It's never a question. It's never an option. It's never a debate. It's never a wonder. My kids don't have to wonder, are we going to church this week? Because we're going. Because we're more than going to church. Literally, we are the church. It's not just about coming to a building. It's about being a temple of the Holy Spirit in which he dwells in every moment of every day. You know, I don't have to ask my kids in the morning, hey, let me take a poll, quick, quick survey. Who all wants to eat today? Show of hands. You all want us to, to have some food today and eat? Or, or just skip it today. Save us some money at Walmart. We don't have to buy as many groceries. And we'll just skip today, eat tomorrow, skip two days in a row. After that. Is, is that good? No, we just eat, right? Ain't no wonder or question about it. What about this? How many of you think we should breathe oxygen today? Any, anybody takers on that? Or we just kind of skip that? process today it, you, what, what do you think it, you want to don't want to what if being the church became that natural that when your eyes popped open in the morning I'm the church of Jesus Christ God lives in me I have the privilege and the honor to house the Holy Spirit of, of the creative God the Father God the God that is all all in all everything I am the church of Jesus Christ I'm going to represent him with his help the very best I can today. I'm going to commune with him. I'm going to fellowship with him. I'm going to be aware of his presence in my life today, all throughout the day as he reminds me, hey, I got you back, bro. Hey, I'm here with you. Hey, let's walk through my word. Hey, I love you with an everlasting love. Hey, I'm reminding you of who you are in me. Don't let anything in this world get you down. Why? Because I am the church. There's never a question if we're going to church. We are the church. And when families get back a hold of that, and establish that God belongs at the top. Somebody was talking to me this week about somebody I know, and they were saying, man, they, I, they've been trying this church. They've been trying that church. They've been going over here. They've been going over there. And they say, I just don't know what they're looking for. I said, I do. And they've already found it. Their life centers around their kids' sports. They are going most weekends to a ball tournament, to ball practice, to getting ball gear, uniform, measured, size, cleats, whatever. I said, they found their church, and they're all in there, everything. Now, some of you get a little squirmy on me right now. What their kids will grow up with is a foundation in sports. What they won't grow up with is a foundation in Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is Shifting sand. And I love sports like that. I was up till midnight watching Clemson beat Ohio State, just like some of you were. Saying, man, I got to go to bed. And my one day of work's tomorrow morning. I got to get up. I'm just kidding. Y'all know me better than that. But I'm telling you something. I don't love sports more than I love the house of God and my relationship with Christ and being the church. It's just funny how we can negotiate things and, and kind of feel like, well, you know, I do pretty good over here, so I think it's okay to compromise with this. And 
after all, my, my little girl, she's got a bright future. She's being recruited by colleges, volleyball or basketball or wiffle ball or ping pong or whatever. I mean, I got I to gotta really go all in with her on that. I'm not saying you have to compromise or give up those talents and those abilities. But here's what I'm encouraging. Prioritize Christ. Prioritize raising them in the love and the admonition of the Lord. Above those things. Let those things find their proper places. And do that with God's help. But I'm telling you folks, too many have negotiated away the relationship with Christ. And they've went all in on the hobby, the sport, the job, the career. I'm not talking about just kids playing sports. I'm talking about all of our lives, that things that compete. The Greek word translated as church has a powerful meaning, this word ecclesia. What ecclesia means is really two things. It means both a gathering or assembly. In other words, we can listen to a, a preacher or a minister in a podcast, in a radio program broadcast or whatever, and that's good. And I, I recommend that with those who are teaching the Word and preaching the, the Word of God. But that's not the same as being planted in the house of the Lord, is it? There is a difference. I encourage you, I, I'm sure you, like me, listen to people throughout the week at, at different times when you have some alone time, you can put your earbuds in and, and, or you can turn your car radio on and you can listen to some solid biblical teaching and foundational growth discipleship stuff. But I'm telling you, there's nothing like coming together in the manner in which we're here right now. Those of you that may be watching us right now or, or later this week, there's nothing like being home with the family. Many of us experienced that this, this past week at, at, with the Christmas holidays or, or last month with the Thanksgiving holidays of, of having the family come home. There's nothing like it. Man, I love talking to my kids, you know, most of the time. Y'all know what I mean. I love having that that. that relationship with them where I can communicate on phone and, and as they get to be teenagers and stuff seems like that's all you get to do is, is text or, or, or a quick phone call here or there when they're really in trouble and, and text just won't do and, and so but you know what's even better is having them close to you spend some time with them face to face mano a mano you know body to body just being there with them together isn't that special most of the time <laughs> sometimes you need a break I understand that and that's the same way it is with the family of God. It's okay to listen to those things. It's okay to, to soak yourself in God's word and listen to preaching. But it's, it's, it's even better to come together like this. As the Bible instructs us to do so, do not neglect the assembling of yourselves together and so much more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Be the church. Come together, assemble, and gather. We are the called out ones of the Lord we are, we are supposed to, to join together on a regular basis and honor God and be unified and corporately hear the word of God together just like we're doing right now, together, together to, to use our giftings and, and, and be strengthened and, and just, just come as a, as a body. We are the church, and we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel from our assembling together to launch us out. Man, when we're planted in the house of God, I'm just going to tell you, we aren't spiritual consumers. We are productive members of the family. It's not like everybody gets up from the table and all just pushes away after a good meal and says, okay, let's go in there and stretch out in front of the TV. How many of you are that one person get, that gets left cleaning up the kitchen and doing the dishes every time? Stand up. Stand up if you're that one person. Stand up and let us see you in this house. Yes, let's give these folks a round of applause. They deserve a big hand. But even better than that, let's help these people out. When we get finished eating, let's get our plate. Let's take it to the sink. Let's start washing it out. Let's, let's help clean up that mess, right? That's a big part. We're, we, don't, we aren't just consumers. We come in here and, and judge the, the worship. Well, the music, I give it about an 8.3 today. It was okay. Oh, the preacher, man, that guy was off. I don't know what he did over Christmas. But that was like a 4.3. He needs a lot of work. And, you know, I'm going to be praying next Sunday. He's going to be better. No, 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 no. 
Oh, we need a nursery worker. Oh, somebody else will take care of nursery. Them little babs, you know, whatever. I, I, we need an usher. Oh, well, I, I can't pass a plate. I get, you know, my left hand not coordinated with my right hand. I don't know. It's not that hard, guys, really. When you're a consumer, you just take, 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 take. When you're planted in the house of God, you come to church saying, how can I help? What do we need today? Nursery worker sick, couldn't make it today. Give me them babies. Woo! I'll swaddle them babies. <laughs> Christmas movie. Sorry, flashbacks. Woman, swaddle that baby. I love that part. So. What can I do to help my family of faith? What a heart to have. That's what God's called us to. The church does not only exist for us. When we're followers of Christ, we realize that we are the church and we exist for the world around us. There's a massive difference between going to a building and being plugged into a calling, to a, to a movement, to a mission. And that's what God's calling us to. Let me tell you something, folks. It's about connection. There's, there's, a, there's a couple scenarios here. There's people that show up Sunday after Sunday. And, and man, God gets a hold of them in a powerful way. Maybe it's through a worship song. Maybe, man, the, the, the song just speaks right to everything they're going through. And, and they understand who Christ is better because of that, that song. And it just, it just moves them to something. Or, or maybe it's something in the message that brought forth. Or maybe in the prayer time. I don't know. But something just touches them deeply. And they're, they're moved. And they're, 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 they're changed in, in some ways. And, and, and when, when, when that's over with, they, 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 they show up for a few more weeks. And, and, and yet, they never really get connected. They never really jump into a, a group of, of people and say, you know, I, I want to do life with some people. I want to I want to grow together. I want to really be a part of the family. So, but they, they never make that that choice. And so when the winds of adversity and, and trials and tribulations start blowing in their lives and hard times come and and and, and it just kind of beat on their their door, then then guess what? They they crumble and they fold. Why? Because they didn't put down deep roots. But, but person B, they come, they show up, they have a similar experience. Man, God shows up in a powerful way. Maybe it's through a worship song. Maybe it's through the message. Maybe it's through the prayer. Maybe somebody came up to them and said, man, so glad to have you at church today. We love you and we're glad you're here and stuff. And, and, and after that morning, man, something clicks inside of them. And they say, man, how can I, how can I show up more? How can I get connected? And uh, oh, Pastor Joseph, who's preaching the word, by the way, at his home church back in Lake Lure. Let's just pray for God to do great things there this morning. We miss he and Angie and the kids. But there, he's there giving the word to those folks and 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 they, they they say how can I get in a connect group and 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 somebody locks them in I, the other week I, I noticed that we had this, this family has been visiting with us and now they're kind of here and home and 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 I think I think she forgot something came back in to grab it uh, out of the nursery and three of our ladies were in the in the hallway in that same area uh, out near the nursery and and they were talking about stuff church was long over and when she came back in they were like hey I'm so and so and they introduced and they're like hey we want y'all to come visit our connect group no we want you to come visit it was three of them fighting over her and her family to come to their connect group and I was like this is awesome I love this Bless her heart, she was kind of trapped. She was like, okay, okay, oh, sure, okay, oh, well, oh, just get me out of here, please. I don't know what these people are doing. But this person B gets connected, starts going, starts cultivating those friendships and relationships. And so when the winds of adversity start blowing and the trouble starts knocking on their door, guess what? People are asking them, how can we help you? What's going on? We'll watch your kids for you if you need to go to the hospital. Whatever you need, we'll, we'll bring food over. We're, we're here to support, serve, and love and, 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 and get through these things together. And how can we help? And you know what's happening? They're, they're showing up. They're going through the word together. They're studying together. They're praying together. They're, they're building those personal relationships. And what's happening? There's roots. What, what are they doing? Don't lose me right now. Those roots are just going deeper and deeper and deeper. So when those winds start to blow, guess what? They're strong and they're secure and they're not going to be blown away and their, their tent's not going to be blown down and everything's going to, going to last. Just like the Bible says it will do. Because the roots are deep. We're part of a family. There's a huge difference between going to a building and being planted in the house of God. And I ask you this morning, are you planted? And number three on your outline, I want you to see what that process looks like as we head towards the finish. What happens 
when you're planted. I want to give you two things. First of all, your roots grow deep. Just like I mentioned a moment ago, Jeremiah 17, 8 tells us you are like trees that are what? Planted by the waters on the river banks with roots that reach down deep into the water. When the roots grow deep, what happens? You're not bothered by heat, as it says. You're not worried about long months of drought. I wonder how many of you right now have some heat going on in your life. There's some things that are just kind of warming up. Or maybe how many of you right now seem like you're going through that drought that we mentioned a few moments ago. Look at me. If your roots are deep, if your roots are deep, you're going to not just survive, but you're going to flourish. In the midst of heat, in the midst of drought, you are going to flourish big time. How many of you ever visited California and seen the redwood trees? Phenomenal, phenomenal sight. These are the largest growing, tallest living things on planet Earth. They can literally grow to be 30 stories tall. And they can be as, as big as three stories wide. And so how in the world does a tree grow 30 stories high? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's all about the root system. They, their roots just grow deep and then they grow wide. They can, they can go out 100 feet or up to 150 feet deep and parallel that much as well. And what happens is this. You've got this one 30-story tall tree with roots that are going way, way, way down. And then, then they've got roots going way, way, way out. And what happens is when there's a cluster of them, the roots begin to connect. And guess what? That solidifies those trees even more, right? Here's the picture that I want us to grab a hold of right now. Our roots together as the family of God need to grow deep and they also need to grow wide to where our roots are connecting together. And literally, as I've got my camo on, how great did that work out? We are an army of God. Shoulder to shoulder, side by side, we're moving forward in the power of God together. And I'm going to tell you something. That three-strand cord is not easily broken, as the Bible tells us. We grow deep together. We need each other as the body of Christ. I can promise you. I can pro Look at me. I I'm almost guaranteeing you this week that you're going to face some opposition, right? You're going to face some kind of trial. You're going to have some kind of struggle. You're going to face some kind of setback. I even guarantee you this. You're going to interact and come across the path of some crazy person. And here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll even go this far. If you don't call me up, I'll send you one of mine. I, I get multiples of them, it seems like, every week. Don't you love that? So when that happens, you need to be planted deep. You need to be planted strong. You need people that you can call on and count on that will be there for you. We're not called to do this by ourselves. Second thing about that along with being planted deep is our roots will produce fruit. Right? And what that fruit is is simply the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, meekness, all those things that Paul wrote in Galatians 5 will be the fruit that we bear in all those situations. Patience, all that good stuff will be ours. Listen, folks, we need it in our lives, and we need to have it to give to other people. And the last thing today that I, I want to share with you is that you've got to see what you need to grow and flourish very quickly, there are five things, five things for a tree to flourish. Number one, it takes the good soil. Number two, it takes light. Number three, it takes water, high-quality H2O. Number four, it takes temperature. And, and finally, it takes time, right? It takes time. It takes soil, and I'm talking about the good soil of your heart that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 13. Let me ask you this right now before we close. How, how, is, how is your life? Is it receptive? Is it ready soil to take in the seed of God's word? Number two, it takes light. The word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a what? A light unto your path. Number three, it takes water. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the what? 
living water come and pour and wash over us and renew us, Lord. And then it takes temperature. Church, we need the fire of the Holy Spirit to warm the seed that is planted in our hearts and in our lives, and it takes time. Boy, don't we know it takes time. How many of you plant tomato plants in the summertime? Anybody in this room anymore? Yeah, we got a few hands. When you plant that seed in that good soil and you put the water on it and, and you put it out in the sunlight where it can, can get the light and, and all that good stuff, do you walk out to, tomorrow, the day after you plant that seed, do you walk out there and pick a luscious, flourishing, red, ripe, juicy tomato off of that plant and go in there and cut it up and make you a tomato sandwich with Duke's mayonnaise and salt and pepper on that thing? Anybody? The next day you got that? What about the day after that? Two days after you plant the seed, you go out there and you pick off a ripe, luscious, ready-to-go, red, juicy tomato and just kind of go down your chin a little bit. You have to wipe it off with you like me and Devin do our, our shirts and not the napkins, unfortunately. No, it takes time, right? When's the best time to plant a seed for a tree? 20 years ago. <laughs> Amen. It takes a good bit of time for a tree. When's the next best time to plant that seed? Today. Psalm 92. You'll flourish. Those who were planted in the house of the Lord will flourish like the cedar and the palm tree. Would you close your eyes for just a moment with us as we finish this part of our service and then then we're going to make a, a declaration about being the army of the, of the Lord and, and being together and fighting together. But before we do that, with your eyes closed for just another moment, I want to ask you this question. How many of you in this room, you just you haven't been flourishing? You just haven't been flourishing. You've just been getting by, just struggling day to day, just dragging through life. And, man, you, you understand right now that there's, there's a lot more available to us that we've, we can be living in. Can I just see your hands across this room if that's you? Yes, sir. How many others will raise your hand and say, man, pray for me? Yes, ma'am. I see your hand. Any? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many others? Man, I want to I flourish. I want to be an overcomer. I want to be victorious. I want those palms waving for victory in my life. And I, I want to know that abundant, overcoming, victorious life that Christ made available. How many of you? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. How many of you would say right now, you know what? I've been that, that person that showed up to church, watched worship, sit back with my arms folded. When it was convenient to go, I'd be there, but, man, I, I understand now that's not it. <laughs> that's way short of what God's calling us to, to be planted in his house, in his family. The Bible literally says that when we become family of God, we're grafted into the vine. We, we, are, we are part. We are joined all in, folks. How many of you say that's going to change in your life? 2020's on the horizon. We're about to flip the page of a calendar, a new year, a new decade. Would you just raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm making some bold changes in my life. I'm, I'm going to be planted in the house of the Lord as we're called to do. Can I see your hands across this room? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As a matter of fact, those of you who raise your hand for any of these things, would you just come and stand right here with me at the front of this church? I want us to pray together right here as we finish this time and as our worship team comes and readies themselves to lead us in this closing anthem. Would you just come now? Just make your way. Come on. Take that step. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you know, man, I need to be here. I, I want to flourish. I want to I I know God like I've never known him before, and I want to be a part of his family. Thank you so much for coming up here. Thank you so much. Who else is going to come and join? Who else is going to be a part of this time as we finish out the year strong? Maybe you need to come and pray for some of these people this morning. Pray with them and stand with them. Would you come and do that? Make your way up now. This is your family right here. Come and rally around them and be a part of, of seeing God work miracles in their lives. Everybody stand to your feet across this room, whether you're up here or not. But it's not too late if you want to come and join us up here for this time. You're more than welcome. God's doing something powerful. For those who will grab a hold of it and make it their own, God's doing something incredibly powerful of change, of going deep with our roots, grabbing a hold of that life that, that we're called to flourish. 
In Jesus' name, we agree together, Lord, that we surrender ourselves fully to you, God, that we go all in right now, that no longer are we going to church, God, but we, we understand that we are the church as the people of God. And for those in this room, Lord, who would say right now, I don't even know that I have that relationship with Christ. And right now, God, would you come in as they open up their hearts and lives, as they confess their sins, as they confess you as Savior and Lord, God, would you just be that to them right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, this, this dragging day to day and just barely getting by with all the stuff coming at us, God, we, we just say that is done for now, Lord. We are overcomers in and through you, God. We are victorious, Lord. We are flourishing, God. We are those people that are living and moving in complete victory because of you in us and through us, God. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for that seed that falls on fertile ground, good soil, God, for the, the fire of the Spirit, for the, for the living water, Jesus, coming in and, and, and doing what only he can do to bring much fruit, much fruit from our lives. Lord, we honor you. We thank you. And God, this isn't just some emotional exercise we go through many times at the end of our services or during our prayer time, Lord. This is real. This is life. This is power. We are truly connecting with you because, because we understand just how much you love us. And Lord, we are learning to love you with everything that we have and everything that we are. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for victory. Thank you for your love. And God, we close this time out by declaring in all of our lives, we are the church. We are yours and you are our foundation, our, our solid rock. You are our everything, Lord. In Jesus' name, and everybody said together, amen and amen. Well, I said we were going to sing out today, but I was told there's a a change of plans. And the reason for that is that our bathrooms have went way off course in the building. So uh, apparently we don't want to keep you any longer so you can go to the restaurant and use their bathrooms that you're going to be eating lunch at. I'm just kidding. I don't go where you go. But we'll get those fixed. You have a great week. Remember, if you need connect group information, Justin's going to be out in the hallway uh, here in just a minute. And our other Connect group leaders that are here today with their blue shorts on, see them. Stop at the big blue wall. If you need to pray or talk or anything, Pastor Scott, myself, Terry, we're here for you. We love you guys. Happy New Year, and we will see you in just one week or less. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's message. For more information about Connections Church, you can go to connectionschurch.church or follow us on Facebook and Instagram.